Hello. In this video, I'm going to go over how to solve a statically indeterminate axial loading problem. Okay, as you can see, this problem is a composite problem with a gap. So, an aluminum rod is reinforced over part of its length, a little bit over half of its length, by a bonded steel tube. Before any loads are applied, there is a 0.4 millimeter gap between the right end and the right support, as well as there being a left support. But there's this 0.4 millimeter gap. Um, here I have the geometry of it. The outer material is steel, inner is aluminum. Here's a Young's moduli. The outer material is 100 millimeters diameter, inner, which is the aluminum, 50 millimeters. I have the cross sectional areas calculated. And the things that we're looking to find are the support reactions at each end, the normal stress in section one, and the normal strain in the steel tube in section two. So first things first, let's bring up the program and let's put in our information. So breaking it down into segments, this is two segments. Basically, where does the geometry change? Well, there's a uniform section here, and then there's a uniform composite section here. So two segments. So starting from the left, let's put in the information. So for segment one, just the aluminum rod. It's 0.4 meters. Bring everything down into base units. Its diameter is 50 millimeters. Its outer Young's modulus, which is just aluminum, 73.1 gigapascals. Okay, that's 10 to the 9th. And that's it. It wants our cross sectional area, which I have calculated here. Okay, and segment 2. The composite segment, so let's select composite. Let's put in the information. So it's 0.8 meters long. Outer diameter is 100 millimeters. So that's 1.1 meter. Inner diameter, 50 millimeters. Outer material is steel, so 200 times 10 to the 9th. Inner is aluminum. Okay, the outer area, the inner. Okay, then we can put in our force data, of which there is only one force applied at 0.4 meters from the end. It's right where the composite segment begins. Okay, so 0.4, it's 400 kilonewtons. So 400,000 newtons. And its tension with regard to the left, it's moving away, so it's positive. And it's clamped on both ends with a gap of 0.4 millimeters. OK, let's draw this. Okay, so to solve this problem as an indeterminate problem, there is a three-step process. First step, the, remove the right clamp and solve for the net elongation of the shaft as just a normal determinate problem. Step two, also remove the, the clamp at the right, but also remove all of the forces and put a one unit force in tension, so it's positive, at the right end. Then you solve for the net elongation a second time. With these two net elongations, you can then calculate, and the program will do it the, itself, but I will also show you in one of the slides uh, what the force, reactionary force of the right clamp actually is. And with that information, you can then solve the entire shaft as a determinate problem itself. 
and we will be able to find all of the answers that we wanted. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and do this. So first things first, it wants our section two elongation. The clamp removed at the right, there's no force going on in this segment, so the elongation is zero. So we can move on. And you can see we have our summation of forces that I have the equations right now. I have stress calculated, but we are only worried about net elongation for the moment. So we can just jump down straight for the elongation value. Should be fairly simple. Okay. So that's the net elongation for all of step one, and we can move on to step two, which wants us to analyze it with our unit force. As we can see, I have it written out here. We have our summation of forces, and then I have on the left set of equations, I have calculations for the outer material, steel, and on the right, I have the calculations for the inner aluminum. Again, stress does not matter, but I have it there anyway. And at the bottom here, I have the net elongation calculated out. And it is an assumption that both materials will elongate the same. They're going to be equal to each other. So really, it's just find um, the shared amount of force that either the inner material takes up or the outer reacts. And with either of those, you can solve for the net elongation of, you can solve for the elongation of that segment. So we can go ahead and put in this value. Okay. It's a very small value, but remember it's just one Newton is applied. We can move on to segment one now. So again, summation of forces, just one Newton. Stress is calculated out don't really care about that. So here's our elongation. We can calculate it out. Again, very small value, 10 to the negative 9. Okay, and now that that's done, the program automatically uses these two net elongations. It calculates what the net elongation is for step two, which I have written out here and it uses those two to find the force at the right clamp, which is negative 210,000, nearly 211,000 newtons. And I'll show you how that goes down in my slide, which I have as step three and then the final solution as step four. The program is just three steps. But this is the equation you use. It's basically the net elongation delta one minus the gap distance, all divided by net elongation of step two. And if you're doing a program, a problem with no gap, then you can just put that in as zero, and it still works fine. And this force at the right is actually one of the answers we're looking for, so I have it highlighted in yellow. And then you can go ahead, apply that to the shaft using your normal sign convention. So for the final process, we apply that force from the right clamp and we solve it as a determinate problem and we can get all of our final answers that are still left. So beginning with analyzing segment two, again as before, I have it broken down. This time we actually are going to want to know what the stress values are. So let's go ahead and start putting this in. So the outer force PO42 looks like a plausible value because it's taking the majority of this shared amount. Steel would take the more. 
Here is the inner, the aluminum. Okay, the stress, the outer stress, sigma naught for two. Okay, inner stress. Okay, and finally, the elongation value, which I have calculated down here. Remember, the outer and the inner elongation values have to be equal to each other. It's a rather small value, but it's actually being scrunched up from that compression on the shaft. Which makes sense conceptually. You can check these values. Okay, it accepts all of them. Then we can move on to analyzing our segment one, the final time. And right away when you do your summation of forces, you can find the reaction at the left, which is the reaction of the left clamp and part of one of the answers that we are looking at, looking for. Okay. Then the stress value the elongation okay solution complete and it calculates the net elongation for you notice that it is still 0.4 millimeters that's as far as the shaft is going to elongate and one thing I forgot to mention is that one of the answers we were looking for, which the program itself doesn't ask for, is the strain. However, it's easy once you have the elongation, the deformation, to calculate the strain. It's just that amount, delta 42 over the length of the segment. And this is our value, the final answer that we are looking for, that I forgot to mention earlier. But that's pretty much all there is to it. It's just run through the problem twice with those changes finding the net elongation you can just gun straight for it and then with those two you can find the reaction of the clamp and when you have that you can just do it as a normal determinant problem